This Zumba stuff is great. <sighs> Everybody, you should try it. really got me going. Hey guys, how many of you have ever tried Zumba? You know, we talk about trying something new every day. Try Zumba. Gets your blood going. Great workout. Gets that endorphin release. Makes you feel really happy. Plus, if you took up my, uh, that, my choice about learning something new and a new language, hey, Spanish is right up this avenue. Anyway, today we're going to see Coach Luke He's going to be talking to us about nutrition. Remember I told you that yesterday? And I hope you enjoy Coach Ryan's breaststroke. So we are looking forward to seeing Coach Luke in his kitchen today with nutrition. Hope that you have a good time with it. Listen carefully and let's get some ideas about what's good to eat. Okay, go gold. All right. Welcome to another uh, episode of Chattahoochee Gold Live. Today we got something special for you guys, right? A little bit of a cooking show. Call me Martha Stewart, I don't know, all right? Potatoes, right, these are my go-to right here. Simply potatoes. Yes, I could buy the, the already, um, the whole potatoes, right? But I buy the chopped up ones, convenience. That's what I'm looking for here, all right? About $2.25, maybe you can get them on sale a little bit cheaper than that. Find them at Kroger, okay? Anywhere you go. Bacon, that's your protein right here. Now, I'm choosing bacon. Maybe not the best thing for you, right? There's some other, you can, you know, honestly, I've done this before where I cook it with steak, right? Throw the steak on the grill out there, bring it in, mix it in with the potatoes when they're cooking. Oh man, it's a great thing right here. But we're going bacon today. A little fattier, right? Fat's not a bad thing, but also a little more flavorful too. All right, we're gonna season the potatoes with some Old Bay. Probably one of my favorite things to use on potatoes here. A little bit of Old Bay, a little bit of salt, maybe a little bit of black pepper, who knows, okay? Throw some garlic in there. Already got that chopped up, ready to go. Orange peppers and a little more protein. All right, if you didn't get enough in you, got some eggs here, okay? Um, all right, let's get this thing going here. Got our uh, skillet on the stove. Just clean it off here, got to get that cleaner out of here. All right. What I didn't get ready was the bacon here. You don't just throw the bacon, uh, at least I don't. You don't throw the bacon right on, on the skillet. I don't have that big of a skillet here. Okay, so I like to chop the bacon up. Okay, little pieces, get it ready. Cooks faster, all right? Like we said, we're looking for speed here. Trying to get a quick meal in. Uh, you know, without having to go to McDonald's or your local gas station and get a quick sandwich or something, right? This is this is good stuff right here, all right? So chop up your bacon, slice that stuff up. And now, a little secret to success here, right? You get the cast iron out. Didn't have that out before. Got it out now. 12 inches, cast iron. The longer you have it, the better it works, all right? I mean, this thing just gets better and better every time you use this thing. You put the bacon on before everything right? You, you cook the bacon before the potatoes. You use the grease from the bacon to cook the potatoes, okay? So we're going to throw this bacon on here. Here it sizzle. Got to get that skillet hot, right? Else your food will stick to it. Mm -mm. Now, once it's on, let it sit for a second and stir it around. Now, you don't need to worry, like, how I, how I had it stacked up chopped it up and it was all stacked together. You don't need to unstack it, right? You just throw it in there. The heat will make it separate and it'll unstack this naturally, all right? Come over here, you can get a little good look at this. Yeah, all right, cast iron skillet. Up here, and that heat up a little bit. All right, gonna let this sit for a second. Like I said, I'm using bacon. Okay, you want a leaner, healthier option? Turkey bacon, man, love that stuff. Honestly, there's days I think turkey bacon tastes better than the real, or uh, not real stuff, but than the the other bacon, the pork bacon. 
Okay, this is a regular old school bacon here. Okay, you know, a lot of grease coming off it. I'm gonna use that grease to cook these, these potatoes here. If I wasn't using bacon, like I said, turkey bacon would be another option of mine. Um, that doesn't have as much grease. You're probably, you would wanna do things a little bit differently there. Okay, cook the bacon separate, right? Over here, cook the potatoes uh, with some olive oil, maybe a little butter in there. Okay, because you don't have the grease from, from the bacon. But yeah, there's all types of different options here. Cooks. Taking it off here, got my little grease strainer. I'm gonna put it in the, a little bowl here so we don't have to pour this grease down the uh, sink. Or you know what I mean, we don't have to use paper towels to, to get the grease off the bacon. We just like drain it into a bowl and then, and then dispose of it. Okay, so getting all the bacon out of the skillet here. Some pieces aren't as crispy as others, but we're gonna throw this back into the potatoes as the potatoes are uh, almost done being cooked a little later from now, okay? So that the bacon will finish up cooking and all that. Oh, shoot. Splattering grease everywhere, don't be doing that. All right, so, skillet's still piping hot here. Now, gotta get the potatoes on. Take your knife, remember, safety first. Always cut away from yourself or near, never toward yourself. Okay, slice off the top of that there. Potatoes in. Oh, that grease got me. Yeah, be a little more, uh, trying to hurry and kind of hustle this thing, but patience is everything. So, probably you could go another bag of potatoes. What do you think here? What do you think, Coach? No? All right. Well, all right, no potatoes then. Those are gonna cook for a second. As they're cooking, I'm gonna season them here. Oh man, look what I almost did. Don't ever leave the lid off your, your spice container there. I almost dumped a whole, whole bunch of old, uh, old bay on this stuff here. All right, here we go. Old bay, Give the little tap. Little tap. All right, all the taters in the season. All right, get that thing out of the way. Got to get all of it. Boom. That's one side. Done. Then take your garlic. Throw that in there. Let that cook. That smell is going to be amazing here. All right. Sauce. Ooh, getting toasty in here. All right, now check that out. Let that cook. Right? I like to get it a little crispy, a little brown on both sides. Now, I'm not gonna lie, lately, um, I've been messing with this cast iron a bunch, and my potatoes have been sticking every now and then, and the crisp sticks to the bottom of the pan, and then there's no crisp on my potatoes, right? That's not what we want. We want crisp on the potatoes here. So if these start sticking to the pan, I'm gonna take these potatoes off, put them in another pan here. All right, not the cast iron, right? Not as cool, but not stick. Get the crisp, all right? Almost forgot. This is the secret. Now, you know, maybe you don't like this. I do, all right? You throw a little rosemary in your potatoes. Oh man, flavor through the charts, through the roof, off the charts, whatever I was trying to say there, all right? It's good stuff right here. So here's what you gotta do. Rinse it first, all right? You don't know without a pesticizer on this thing here. Don't need any of that. Especially with this coronavirus going around. 
rinse it off, maybe a little more thorough of a rinse there. All right, get the water off it. Now, here's what I do, okay? There's a technique to this. I like to get all the leaves off there. Oh, kind of botching this thing here. All right, get all the leaves off the stem. And you might be thinking, why, why aren't you throwing the whole stem in? Don't worry. The stem's going in, okay? The stem has flavor too, okay? Oh no, potatoes are sticking a little bit. You know, these cast iron pans, you gotta have them seasoned right. And to be quite honest, I think I messed something up with it a little bit. Took some chicken the other day, and the chicken was sticking. And yeah, now everything seems to be sticking a little bit. All right. It's an emergency. It's an emergency. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to switch the pans here. I'm telling you, I like the crisp. Some people, they can uh, they can go without the crisp. They say it's okay if the potatoes are crispy. I want the potatoes crispy. Okay, so we're switching pans. A little switcheroo action. All of it goes into another pan. Yeah. Rosemary, garlic, potatoes, get it crispy. There you go. Now, sorry about the sneeze here. Whew. Good food cooking. Gets to the nostrils. Can't let it stop you, though. Orange peppers, right? You can use red, red and yellow. Red and orange, red, yellow, and orange. I don't care. Okay, I had orange. That's what was in my refrigerator today. Turn the pan on. Probably gotta get that hot first. Orange peppers, skillets, hot. Okay, now I'm gonna throw these on. Get a little sizzle in there. All right. Now you might be like, "Oh, did he spray the pan or whatever?" These are non-stick pans. Okay, and I like to, you know, look. I already got grease in the bacon, grease in the taters from the bacon. Okay. I don't. I'm trying. I don't need any extra oils, fats right now. I've got plenty right there. Okay, now fats are important, are important. Jeez. Lubricate the joints, all right? Make everything move well. Turn these taters a little bit. Kind of got a little full of the pan here. I had to call an audible on the cast iron. All right, they turned decent enough. Now, go another one more. Last one. Round of uh, old day here. Okay, feel free to add more or less uh, for where your taste is. I like a little bit more. A little bit lighter taps. Light taps. All the way around. Get them all covered. All right? I like that old day taste. That rosemary, that garlic in there. Oh boy. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right, delete that. I like the peppers to not be super soft. I like a little crunch to them. So I'm only going to cook these for a little bit longer here. Get a little crisp on the end. Don't want them too soft. I like a little crunch. Again, personal preference here, all right? Uh, that's, that's the magic of cooking. You can make it any way you want. Spice it up, spice it less, whatever. All right, peppers are in. Put the peppers in there. Should have sewed that step probably, but we'll show this step. We're gonna throw that bacon that was drip, drip, draining in that bowl over there. Gonna get that bacon in here now. Oh boy, bacon to tater ratio might be a little much, but hey, sometimes you misjudge it. Get a little more protein in there though. Um, all right, next step, getting those eggs ready. Gonna get those going here. All right, check it out. Little, uh, little one-handed crack here. Oh, I'll break it. Boom. They can't teach you that at school. Boom. Now, the trick is split it over your edge. Get the grip. Or first off, get the grip. Okay, split it, peel back with the thumb and the index finger, all right? 
and do that one more time for you. Here we go. Boom. It's every time. Martha Stork, contact me, all right? Be on your next show, cracking those eggs. You're whisking them up. All the yolks blended in there. I don't have a whisk, I use a mini fork. Seems to work well. All right, whisking, done. Now, throwing it on the uh, old stove here. Turn it down a little bit, probably should turn it up. Ah. I will throw some spray on this. A little non-stick action. Coconut oil. Better for you. Eggs are in. Bacon's in. Pepper's in with the potatoes. We are closing down on the finish line here. Coming at you. Secret ingredient for these eggs here, right? Just a splash, maybe one more <coughs> of milk. Okay, that fluffens them up. That whole milk fluffens those eggs up. It's fluff, fluffing a word. I don't know. Makes them fluffier. There we go. Those eggs are almost done here. Scrambling them up, getting them ready. Throw in these potatoes. Potatoes are done. Potatoes are right here, pretty much. We're good. Little Gordon Ramsay off the heat, on the heat. It says it makes a difference. I can't tell. But I'll do it anyway. All right, we are good. So now, here's what you do. You gotta find a way to put all this together. Best way to do that is giant Tupperware bowl here. All right. Oh boy, this is gonna be difficult. I think I'm doing it well. There we go. Lost a little bit. A few casualties. That happens when you're cooking good food. Okay. Get the eggs in there. Boom. Now, mix it all up here a little bit. Never done before. The lid doesn't fit. We can't do it. Don't have the right lid. All right. Obviously, you serve it, gets mixed up in the plate. Uh, simple meal. One bowl. Look at that. Can't eat it all. Put it in the fridge. Heat up a little bowl, put some cheese on it, a little hot sauce on it, whatever, all right? This is a, you know, if you're looking for a great meal to, honestly, to satisfy and fill you up, this is it, okay? It's got your carbs, proteins, fats in it, all right? Um, it's a good meal here. All right, hello, Chattahoochee Gold Live. All right, got a little quick dry land for you here. Okay, um, it's gonna go two times through each exercise. There, there's eight exercises for these abdominals here. We're gonna go two times through it, 45 seconds on, 15 seconds of rest, okay? It's gonna go like this, sit-ups for the first exercise. So, sit up, down, up, down. Now remember, you're looking for quality, but yes, if you're trying to challenge yourself, get more, try to make them faster, get as, many as you can while keeping good form in that 45 seconds okay then you're going to go leg raises here up and down up and down leg raises there okay keeping those toes pointed keeping those legs straight 
really building that lower portion of your abdominals right there. V-ups, oh man, challenging for a lot of people. But man, you get good at these, it'll, it'll help everything with those flip turns. Um, just overall make your core unstoppable here. V-ups, okay? My arms are behind my head, okay? Try to keep them there that whole time. I'm gonna fold at the hips, right? Everything at the hip line, fold. My upper body and my lower body will come together as one, back down. Two, three, okay? And yeah, my leg, my arms do come a little bit in front of my head right there. It's a little, a little challenging to do, okay? V-ups. Next exercise, a plank, okay? So you're here, elbow on the, on the elbows and forearms, okay? Creating that shoulder stability, all right? Keeping the core nice and tight, not having my back sink or my back pike up in the air. Okay, we don't want that. Penguins. Toe touch, these are called different things. I call them penguins because kind of, you know, if someone's looking down at you, you look like a penguin just lying on your back, sliding around. Um, you keep the upper portion of your body, the upper portion of your back, excuse me, off the ground, okay? And the hands are flat on the ground and you're twisting and sliding left, right, left, right, left, right. And believe it or not, that little movement just absolutely um, blows up those abdominals, okay? It blows them up. Oblique V-ups. So we saw the original V-up where we are folding at the, the waist, at the hip line, right? Oblique V-ups, you're gonna be a little bit on your side. So if I'm going on my left side here, really triggering the, the left side of my core or my oblique muscles here. And I'm gonna fold up again at the waist, up, down, up, down, up. Oh man, uh, probably one of my favorite exercises to do besides those penguins right there oblique v up. So you're going to go on the left side, 45 seconds on, 15 seconds of rest. Then the next exercise is going to be the right side. Okay. So you'll be on the right side now with those oblique v ups here. Okay. Up, down, and really show control and squeeze at the top. Okay. Squeeze those obliques, those abdominals at the top there. Okay. So obliques left, obliques right. The last exercise out of, out of eight here, Superman rocks, okay? You're gonna do these for a two second hold. So what they look like here is Superman flying in the sky. Okay, try to keep the head down a little bit. You're gonna try to get the upper portion of your body and your thighs off the ground here. So here's how it's gonna look. One, two, relax. One, two, relax. And try not to spend so much downtime just laying here. Hold it, one, two, go down, and then right back up, one, two. And man, you're gonna strengthen those back abs, those abs on the, on the back side of your body there. Okay, believe it or not, the, the core is not just in the front of your body, it wraps around in the back as well, okay? Two times through of every exercise, let's go through it again here. Sit-ups, leg raises, V-ups, planks, penguins, oblique V-ups to the left side, oblique V-ups to the right side, and Superman rocks with a two second hold, okay? All of that is 45 seconds on, 15 seconds of rest. It takes about 16 minutes there, okay? When you're done with that, this is the real challenge here. Now this is, this is gonna be, some people might find this to be a cakewalk. Other people, this is, this is gonna be tough here. You're gonna go 100 push-ups, okay? But it's not just, you know, sets of 10, sets of 20. No, it's not that. You're gonna go 10 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest. So you need a running clock, okay? You need a clock that's running. And you're just gonna keep going through that. 10 seconds of push-ups. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whatever you get in that 10 seconds, done, rest for 10 seconds. You're guaranteed 10 seconds rest, okay? You're gonna keep going through that, that cycle, right? Until you get 100 push-ups total. Okay, so keeping that clock running. Again, push-ups here. Keep my hands under my elbows, elbows under my shoulders. Push up, two, three, four, five, okay. How many you can get in that 10 seconds? Oh, that's, that's done then, all right? 10 seconds of work, rest for 10 seconds, then go again. So let's say I get 10 that first round, 10 that second round, and man, it's really starting to hurt. I start to get nine, then eight, and seven. You gotta keep count, okay? But you're just keep going. You're gonna get those 100 push-ups, all right? 
All right, let me know how it goes. All right, hey guys, real quick, I wanna talk to you a little bit about some stretching and why it's important, okay? So, you know, I had a great coach one time point this out to me. You know, imagine if you had a house, right? And in your house, you have a door, okay? Then the door can open all the way up and it can close. It's a good door right there, good entryway to a bedroom or to a house. Well, imagine if the hinges on that door started getting rusty, started falling apart a little bit, and now that door that used to open all the way can only open this much, or maybe this much, where you had to, you had to squeeze through it to go through, okay? Yeah, it's still a door, still a decent door. You can still walk through it and get to where you need to go, but it's limited. Right, the hinges are, are rusty and, and old and falling apart, and the door it just it can't quite do what it used to do. That's like your body here, okay? All of the hard work that we're doing in the pool and out of the pool. Well, I guess we're not really in the pool right now, but uh, when you are in the pool, swimming and out of the pool, doing that dry land, um, it takes a toll on your body, okay? You need to stretch. You need to keep that door open, okay? Keep that door. Um, being capable of being opened and closed, okay? You know, if, if you had a choice, oh, am I, am I gonna buy the house that uh, the doors only open a quarter of the way and I have to slide through it? Or am I gonna buy the house that, that the doors open all the way? Okay, you're gonna go for the, the house that the doors open all the way. You have it. Okay. Dry land, got those sit-ups and those push-ups. Hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, keep stretching, okay? And have a great day. were killing me. Uh, Zumba this morning, abs in the evening. Man, I'm supposed to be rocking this ducky body come summertime. I'm going to be so fit, man. No one can touch me when I get on the pond. Okay, so hope you enjoyed today. Tune in to our next episode. Coach Penny is going to be talking about freestyle. Great ideas. Great work. We're coming up to the weekend. Do something exciting over the weekend. But remember, above all, stay safe. Stay home. Okay, till next time. Go Gold!